concern if you have any potential questions about the exam. OK, um, if you don't have any questions for now, I will start the lecture today. Um, OK, so uh, today we're going to start a new topic. The topic is about the uh, analysis of the the mechanics, including the uh, estimations of the stress and strain for the um, for the uh, traffic load applied to different type of the pavement structures, including the flexible pavement and the rigid pavement. So this lecture will start this topic about the uh, mechanics analysis for the flexible pavement. So first of all, we have to uh, ask some questions. What's the problems that we need to do for the uh, mechanics analysis? Uh, especially for the things we need to do before we uh, do the construction about the pavement structure. So I list the uh, three questions. So uh, the first thing is like we, we, we know that the pavement is applied to support the load of the road. And we have to know that uh, how the uh, different layers, uh, usually we are considering layer system of the pavement, how these different layers will interact with each other if there are no vehicles, a truck is moving on the road. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is like we want to know what's the potential displacement and deformation or the maximum stress applied to the subgrade. This one will be highly related to the distress of the pavement structure. If the displacement is too large or the stress is too large, it may cause the failure of the pavement structure. And the third one would be the, uh, the stress or the based on the estimation of the stress and the strain, we can try to check whether they will, their value is below the failure conditions of the pavement structure. Uh, we have to design our pavement structure to make sure that is always below the failure conditions during the design life to make sure that uh, the pavement is uh, successful. We don't need to do any uh, reconstruction or maintenance during the, uh, or significant re reconstruction during the design life. So that's the uh, questions that we have to answer during this uh, analysis of the mechanics. Um, sorry, let me try to disable the uh, timing. And uh, the uh, the second thing we want to understand is uh, what kind of tools we're going to use to do the analysis. Uh, we will have some theoretical analysis, so we need to think, consider some uh, suitable theories to conduct the uh, the mechanics analysis. Uh, we also need to make some assumptions about the param input variables. Uh, try to uh, choose the uh, reasonable parameters which can be obtained or measured from the field or from our lab. And the, the last thing is like we need to identify the failure criterions. This is this one is very important because we want to make sure that the uh, the stress and strain level is always below the failure criterion. And uh, with, with that, the, uh, the objective of the mechanics analysis is like we're going to try to uh, predict the stress strain and deformation induced by a predefined traffic load. And also we need to think about the environmental factors. And uh, uh, we want to make sure that the stress and strain all the deformation levels is below the failure, crit failure criterions so that we can try to prevent the significant distress like the rotting, the fatigue cracking, top down cracking, and so on. Uh, this will help us to maintain uh, accept acceptable performance of the payment structure. Um, so in the uh, in our previous le lectures, we have do a lot of analysis about the impact of the environment, the properties of the materials, and also the uh, estimations of the traffic and loading. Those are all the potential factors which can affect the design of the payment structure, which will also be related to the uh, analysis of the uh, payment mechanics. And uh, uh, we also 
or as again, I still need to emphasize that the failure criterion is very important. And this is also the key uh, output that we have to do from the stress and strain analysis, which would be the mechanical analysis. So uh, as for the for the pavement design, we're going to consider two different types of the pavement structures, the rigid pavement and the uh, flexible pavement. Usually the rigid pavement will utilize the concrete slab, which was shown on the left side. We will have the, uh, the uh, PCC slab uh, on top of the uh, sub-base layer, and then they will be placed on top of the subgrade. And usually the thickness of the uh, PCC slab and the sub-base layer would be uh, smaller compared with the flexible pavement. But for the uh, for the flexible pavement, uh, usually we'll consider the asphalt layer, uh, asphalt concrete layer, and uh, it will follow with the multiple layers, the uh, base layer, the sub-base layer, and sub uh, base and sub-base layer. And uh, the thickness would be a little bit larger. Uh, usually for the uh, for these two type of the uh, pavement structures, the dis distribution of the stress or the pressure under the um, the concrete under the uh, pavement layers or about the subgrade layer will be very different. For the uh, for the rigid pavement, the uh, distribution of the stress would be flat and uh, the load will be distributed evenly along the PCC slab, uh, approximately evenly. So you will observe the much smaller pressure above the uh, subway layer. But for the uh, asphalt pavement, the flexible pavement, the distribution is more concentrated. So with that, you can observe the very much higher uh, pressure applied to the subgrade, and this is the part, also the reason for us to design the um, higher thickness for the flexible pavement to make sure that the pressure, the pressure about the pavement layer, the subgrade layer, is uh, small enough so that the subgrade can support the uh, designed uh, load. So these two, apparently, these two will be very different to each other. Uh, so that's the reason we want to have a separate series to analyze the uh, the stress and strain for the rigid and the flexible pavements. Uh, usually for the uh, flexible pavements, we're gonna use the layer resistance, and uh, in the layer resistance, we are uh, in the flexible pavement. We have the asphalt concrete layer, we have base layer, sub base layer, and so on. So each layer will carry part of the load, and it will try to make a uh, and the, the absolute value of the load will reduce gradually at a different depth, at a higher depth of the uh, pavement structure. Uh, so that's for the uh, flexible pavement. But for the uh, rigid pavement, uh, instead of the uh, using the layer system, most of the uh, load will be supported by the PCC slabs. So usually we're going to use the slab action to uh, analyze the uh, load transfer to the subgrade layer. And uh, uh, in this case, this slab will carry will carry most of the load uh, to ensure that the um, the pressure applied to the subgrade is small enough. So this this will need, uh, will need us to consider a uh, very uh, high quality PCC slab to support the uh, large enough traffic load. Um, so that's the uh, that's for the for the difference of these two uh, two type of the pavement and for definitely for this lecture we're going to focus on the um, the flexible pavement first and uh, the figure on the left shows the um, the potential uh, pressure the con um, the tensions or the uh, compressions applied behind the uh, tire and also about the subgrade. You can observe the significant uh, uh, tensions uh, applied at the two, at two sides of the, uh, of the tire and also at the surface of the pavement. And also you're gonna ob observe the significant uh, tension just behind the, uh, the tire about, about the subgrade layer. So this is the uh, typical 
uh, first typical typical load applied to the flexible payment, and we're gonna try to understand what's the impact of this tension and the compression to the uh, performance of the flexible payment. Um, so usually for the flexible payment, uh, the tensile strain at the bottom of the asphalt layer uh, will control the fatigue cracking. Uh, fatigue cracking. Uh, the, we have to design the, uh, the pavement to make sure that the tensile strain behind the uh, asphalt layer, which would be the, uh, the portion here, it's less than, it's less than 70 microstrain. This is the typical value. Uh, also for the uh, vertical stress at the top of the subway soil, which would be the uh, the point here, and we need to con this one is applied for us to control the uh, structure rotting, and we need to make sure that the vertical strain, as a usually this will be a typical value. We have to make sure that the value is a uh, less than 200 microstrain, and here each microstrain strain represents. 10 to the power of um, microstrain, 10 to the power of minus six meter per meter. So this is the unit for the strain. And uh, uh, so this is the criteria we're gonna use. The, uh, it's the typical value we're gonna use for the flexible payment. We have to consider two critical points. Uh, one point direct behind the asphalt layer and uh, another point direct above the uh, subgrade layer. And uh, uh, based on the uh, based on the load applied to the flexible payment, we can observe some typical distress. And uh, uh, the bottom up the bottom up cracking, which is also called the fatigue cracking, it's one of the common uh, stress distress applied to the flexible payment. Uh, as we're going to observe the very significant uh, tensions at the bottom of the pavement structure. And uh, this, this cracking will get started from the, uh, from the uh, interface between the pavement structure and the subgrade and gets larger and larger and eventually uh, propagate to the uh, surface of the pavement and, and you're going to observe the, uh, the cracking. And this one is usually along the, uh, the wheel pass. But in reality, you will also observe some top-down cracking. Usually, that will be uh, next to the wheel pass, and uh, this one is very different from the uh, fatigue cracking. Or we say that the bottom-up cracking. It will start from for the top-down cracking. It will start from the surface of the pavement structure, and then propagate downward. Uh, the course of the uh, top-down cracking. Uh, has been well studied, but the uh, the actual reason is not fully understood yet. So we can observe this cracking in the uh, in the permanent structure, but we don't know what's the actual what's the uh, dominated uh, cause or factors for the uh, for this type of the distress. Um, so usually for the top down cracking, the uh, the generally occurs at the uh, only at the very thick as for the concrete layer, uh, with uh, with three to five years of the paving, and uh, they will most of it, most of them will be the longitudinal cracking. So the width of the crack will be around uh, three to four millimeters. It's in a very small cracks, and the uh, the usually the uh, the depth of the crack could be. Uh, well, could varies from 25 millimeters to up to uh, 50 millimeters. So it's also significantly affect the performance of the pavement structure as the cracks will, will be the major source of the uh, surface infiltration to the pavement structure and reduce the, the features of or the properties of materials behind the pavement. Uh, so those would be the uh, some typical crackings uh, or distress applied to the flexible pavement, and uh, in the uh, design, in the design, we also uh, all the analysis of the stress and strain for the pavement, or uh, flexible pavement. Uh, one of the important input variable is the traffic and the loading. 
So the traffic, we have already uh, uh, learned how to estimate the traffic loadings and the volumes in the previous lectures. Uh, we know that the traffic loadings are related to the, uh, it, it's actually applied to evaluate the wheel load of the trucks, uh, depending on the number, the combinations of the axles and the tires. Uh, also, to, usually for the estimation of the traffic loading, we need to contact, consider the tire pressure and also the contact areas to identify the uh, the uh, the actual load uh, or the stress applied to the surface of the pavement structure. And of course, we need to think about the land distributions of the truck, the number of the uh, repetitions, uh, which will be the load applications and uh, their sequence, and also the speed is very important. And uh, the uh, from the uh, from the previous lecture, we can just quickly summarize what we're going to do about the estimation of the traffic loading and volumes. We have the estimations about the uh, load equivalency factor from the single low, single wheel and the single axle, and then we're going to estimate the uh, the load factor, the truck factor for a single truck, for a type for different type of the truck, and then we're going to consider the. Uh, the uh, traffic, the number of the uh, repetitions over the day, over the designed life, and then eventually we're going to estimate the ESAL, the equivalent single axle load for the pavement that we're going to design. And this would be the information, uh, the automated information about the traffic and loading for the design of the pavement structure. And uh, so this is the, uh, this the this is how we're going to use the traffic and loading in the pavement design. And it's one of the more important factor for the uh, stress and strain analysis. And uh, um, for the uh, single wheel load, uh, especially for the stress and strain analysis, we need to think about the uh, the contact pressures. Usually, the contact pressure of the uh, tire will be uh, equal to the uh, inflation pressure. That, that will be an inflation tire from the tire. And uh, uh, we to simplify the analysis, we assume that the uh, the pressure the pressure is uh, uniformly distributed uh, in the contact area, and that's the uh, that's the first assumption. And the second assumption, we will assume that the uh, we have some assumptions about the shape of the loaded area or the contact area. Uh, we have two different assumptions. Uh, we could either assume that the contact area is in a circular uh, or could it be the rectangular. Usually we will assume that the uh, for the flexible pavement, the, the loaded area or the contact area is a circular, but for the rigid pavement, it's uh, usually assumed to be in the rectangular. So that, that will be the assumptions about the, uh, the pressure, the, the loading pressure and the area. And uh, here we will have some uh, formulas for us for you to calculate the uh, the the loading pressure with respect to the uh, the wheel load. Uh, for for example, for the uh, for the figure on the left, it shows the um, the load pressure with respect to the flexible pavement. And we know that generally there is an uh, if we are provided with the uh, the uh, wheel load, say that the the actual load applied to the tire, and also the uh, infiltration or the infiltration, infil inflation pressure or the uh, tire pressure Q. Then you can calculate the contact area as A equal to P divided by Q. This is the uh, definition. This actually comes from the definition of the uh, pressure. And uh, as you as you will see that the uh, for the flexible pavement, uh, the contact pressure contact area is usually assumed to be in the uh, a circle. So if the uh, radius is set as A, then the area is pi times A square. With that, you can estimate the uh, contact radius A equal to the square root of P divided by pi times Q. Uh, so this is the, uh, the flexible pavement. But if we are talking about the rigid pavement, uh, the contact area is in the uh, rectangle. And we actually have uh, a special uh, ratio between the width and the uh, length of the of this rectangle. 
usually for the um for the for the uh length the of this rectangle it's set as 0.8712 l uh compared with the uh the width of 0.6 l so the ratio is 0 0.87 point uh, 0 0.8712 um versus point uh point six and of course the area would be uh point six l times point eighty seven twelve l so with that you can actually easily calculate the uh value of l which would be the uh the value for you to determine the um the size of the uh, rectangle as the square root of p divided by point uh 5227 times Q. Here Q is the uh, is the tile pressure or the contact pressure. So this would be the uh, the determination about the contact areas of the uh, flexible pavement and rigid pavement for the stress strain analysis. And of course, we made a lot of assumptions like the for the circle contact area for the uh, rectangle contact area, for the contact pressure equal to the tire pressure, those are all the assumptions we have to make for the stress and strain analysis. And uh, so this would be the uh, preliminary information we need to use for the uh, uh, let me try to remove the uh, pre-recorded information. Uh, so uh, we, we have introduced those assumptions and uh, uh, then we need to think about what's the um, what kind of method we can use to uh, analyze the uh, stress and strain for the flexible pavement. And actually there will be uh, several uh, typical methods that could be applied. We can use the uh, analytical solutions. Well, we, uh, we can utilize the homogeneous um, Assumption, uh, we are assuming that the uh, there is only one layer, or we assume, assume that the properties of all the layers will be the same. So the base, base subbase, and the uh, as for the base and subbase layer, they all have the same property. And we also can um, utilize the Burmester theory. Well, it will be applied for the two layer system. So we we'll only have the asphalt layer, and then all the base and sub-base layer would be considered as one, sing one single layer. And we have a more realistic, uh, uh, complicated uh, method, which is called the Audemars procedure. This will be applied for the uh, multi-layers, uh, depending on how many layers you are set for the, uh, for the pavement structure. You have the as for the concrete layer, base layer, sub-base layer, and uh, the, uh, the subgrade layer and so on. And also uh, we can utilize, we can also utilize some uh, softwares to do the estimation, the, which is called the CanPave. And uh, I'm going to introduce you how to use the uh, CanPave to uh, estimate the uh, stress and strain for the flexible and rigid pavement uh, later after this chapter. Um, th this software will use the uh, multi-layer elastic theory to do the estimation. Uh, in addition, uh, we have some more advanced methods, which is called the finite element method. Uh, they could be applied to uh, do a more complicated, more realistic uh, analysis. Uh, with that, don't need to assume that the uh, the soil properties is uh, a constant in each layer. Instead, you can make some. Uh, I can find out the define some linear relationship between the elastic modulus with respect to the depths. I can even assume a non-linear relationship and so on. Uh, but for this class, we're going to start with something simpler and uh, uh, introduce the analytical solutions and learn the uh, software. So uh, let's first go to check the uh, the some. Uh, Assumptions that we're going to use for the um, for the flexible pavement stress strain analysis, and uh, especially uh, we we have to consider the analysis with respect to the uh, multi-layer system. So this is called the multi-layer elastic theory, and uh, uh, 
at the uh, for to implement this theory, we first need to assume that each layer will have the homogeneous and uh, isotropic properties, which means that the uh, the properties of the materials will be exactly the same in each layer. If we if we are talking about the modulus of elasticity, they should be the same. If you are talking about Poisson ratio in the same layer, in the base layer, they should be the same. And uh, that's the first assumption. Uh, this would mean that we will have we only have one modulus of elasticity for one layer, and uh, but we can assume different values of the uh, modulus of elasticity. Uh, E1, E2 for two layers, you have E3, E4. And for the Poisson's ratio, it could also be different. And that's the uh, first thing. And the second thing, we have to assume that the subgrade is semi-infinite. We know uh, where the, what's the uh, depth of the surface of the subgrade, but uh, uh, for the subgrade, uh, it's a semi-infinite, so we don't know where the bottoms of the uh, subgrade is. And uh, for all the other pigment layers, the base layer, subbase layer, S4 layer, uh, their thickness are all finite. We know their thickness, uh, but for the lateral dimensions, we don't know. We uh, we just assume that the uh, the their width would be infinite, or their their long including the longitudinal and the lateral uh, width, they could all be infinite. And uh, in addition, we will assume that there's uh, four frictions between each, uh, between two layers, so that the load and the shear, shear force are uh, applied from the uh, from one layer from to the layer behind can be uh, transferred, can be fully transferred. And uh, finally, uh, for the shear force at the surface of the pigment structure, we assume that there isn't any shear force. Uh, this we will only have the low, uh, the vertical, uh, vertical stress or vertical loading applied to the surface from the surface of the pigment structure, and we're going to ignore the shear force. So those would be the assumptions there, and uh, uh, with that we can we can uh, simplify the, uh, the the pyramid structure with the load. Uh, we're gonna uh, define a uh, a contact area with the load, the contact uh, the radius for the flexible pyramid, the radius of the contact area uh, is set as a. We have the contact pressure. As Q, which will equal to the uh, tile pressure, we have the um, modulus of elasticity and the Poisson's ratio for each layer, and we know the thickness of each layer. And for example, for the uh, for thickness of one Z1, for the uh, for the second layer, it's Z2 minus Z1. We know the uh, we know the uh, depths, and with that, we can calculate the thickness. And eventually, we can find out the uh, total uh, depths of the subgrade layer. So this would be the subgrade. Uh, for the subgrade, we know the thickness, but uh, it could be uh, for the bottom of the subgrade, it could extend to infinite depths. So this is the uh, assumptions for the multi-layer elasticity theory, and uh, we're going to use uh, for most of the analytical solutions. It will be related to this uh, multi-layer elasticity theory, and also we're going to use this one for the uh, Keynes Pave software. And uh, um, so, uh, with that, we can uh, we can actually find out the relationship between the stress and the strain for any points behind the uh, in the pyramid structure with respect to the uh, to the contact areas of the uh, the tire. And uh, the uh, the multi-layer elasticity theory actually defines the stress-strain relationship for three uh, for three type of the strains. The vertical strain, uh, which will be the uh, epsilon z, will be related to uh, or equal to one divided by e times uh, sigma z 
minus uh, mu times uh, sigma r plus sigma t. So this is about the vertical strain. You can also find out the radial strain and uh, tangential strain. Uh, those will all be related by the uh, three different types of the stress. The vertical stress, the tangential, uh, the radial stress, and tangential stress. In this, in this, in this figure, uh, sigma z, this would be the vertical, vertical stress. And uh, this one, sigma t, this one is the tangential stress. And uh, here, sigma r, this one is the uh, radian stress. And also, you can find out the uh, shear stress. This is a uh, uh, tau rz, it's a shear stress. And you can also find out the shear stress on top of the uh, on top of the uh, selected area. So this is a uh, uh, sigma z uh, zr uh, tau zr. And moreover, you can find uh, you can find out uh, uh, utilize those information to uh, once you calculate the uh, vertical stress, radial stress, and tangential stress. You can find out their strain values with the uh, with these three formulas, and uh, uh, we will also have the the multi-layer elastic uh, elastic theory will be able to help you find out the um, the stress, uh, including the vertical radian and the tangential stress and the shear stress at any point. Uh, be in the pyramid structure, assuming that we have a point A here, um, the depths the depths of the uh, point A is Z, and the distance from point A to the center line to the center line of the tire could be R set as R. With the uh, multi-layer elasticity theory. We are able to find out the uh, the stresses and the uh, strain at the at the point A, given the depth and the distance to the center line. Uh, another thing we have to know about the multi-layer elasticity series, like uh, in this in this theory, we actually need to use the modulus elasticity, and uh, this is actually in the property of the material. But in in our lab, we will usually utilize the uh, MR test to find out the uh, resilient modulus. And you might be familiar about this uh, equation. This is the one that we're going to use to find out the relationship between the resilient modulus with respect to the bulk stress and deviator stress. Uh, in uh, in the, uh, the, the, the res resilient modulus is usually, usually in the uh, empirical value about the soil property. And it could be applied to represent the uh, the value of the uh, elast elastic modulus. So in the uh, in the multi-layer elasticity theory, usually we assume that the um, the value of E will be the same to the MR. So this is just one simplification. Uh, another thing is like uh, the multi-layer elasticity um, uh, theory. Could be applied, uh, could be extended to some special case, like the uh, Burmester method. It's one special case for the multi-layer elasticity theory with uh, two layers. So the uh, this theory should be applied for one layer, two layers, three layer, or even more layers as in a general solu general solution. So that's the uh, some brief introduction about the uh, multi-layer elasticity theory. And then let's go to see how we're going to use the uh, some historical information, some empirical data to calculate the uh, the vertical stress and strain for the uh, flexible pigments. 
Uh, this figure shows the relationship between the uh, uh, or help you to find out the vertical stress with respect to the uh, locations of the point A. In this graph, the uh, vertical axis is Z divided by A. Here, Z is the, uh, the depth, depth of point A, and A is the uh, radius of the contact area. And for the horizontal axis, it shows the ratio between the vertical stress and the contact pressure. So it's a sigma Z divided by Q. So usually you are provided with the, uh, the value of the Q, the contact pressure, and you know the depth of the point A. You can then find out in the, a specific point from those lines. And then by utilizing the value of the, uh, the depths, for example, if the depths are Z over A is a three, and you can then find out the, uh, the ratio between the ratio between the uh, vertical stress and the contact pressure as 0 0.3.0, something like that. Uh, another thing you have to pay attention about this graph is about the number in each line. Uh, it's, this number represents the uh, ratio between R and A. So this is uh, R divided by A. And here R is the uh, distance It's the distance uh, from point A, from A to uh, the center line, the center line of the tire. Or the center line of the contact area. So, uh, so with that, with this value, R over A, you can determine which line going to use, and then with the depth, you can identify which point in that line going to use, and then you can find out the value of sigma z divided by q, and uh, usually the q value is given. Uh, with that, you can find out the vertical stress. Uh, similarly, you can do the uh, you can find out the relationship between the uh, the depths and the uh, the ratio between the uh, radial stress. Uh, this is the radio stress and the contact pressure. And again, for the uh, for each line, it will be the value. It will be the result from one uh, ratio of the distance to the center line versus with respect to the uh, radius of the contact area. And the uh, at the last, you will have the uh, figure. We will have the figure to show the relationship between the depths and the uh, ratio between the tangier, tangential pressure and the contact pressure. So uh, here, this is for the uh, tangential pressure, tangential stress. And the, uh, the line will be the same. It will represent the, uh, the ratio of the distance to the center line and the radius. And uh, another thing I want to uh, inform is showing you the relationship between the uh, depths and the uh, shear stress. Here is the uh, sigma RZ. It's the uh, shear stress applied to the point A. And usually we assume that the shear, R, the shear stress sigma RZ equals to the shear stress uh, RT and the shear stress uh, TZ. Oh, you just need a one, one figure to find out all the different shear stress. Oh, this should be the shear stress. Uh, not the sigma, it's delta. Uh, it's tau, sorry. Uh, tau RZ uh, could be determined by this graph. And in this graph, each line represents the, uh, the ratio between R and A. This would be the same to the others. Uh, three figures. And uh, uh, another thing, a last thing that I want to uh, introduce here is the uh, relationship between the uh, shows the deflection 
the deflection applied at the point A with respect to the depth. So here, F is in the deflection factor. Uh, this one, will, with the F, we can find out the vertical deflection. Vertical deflection. Uh, vertical deflection omega equal, equal to Q times A divided by E times F. So F is the deflection factor and omega is the vertical deflection. It shows the displacement at point A. And uh, again, the vertical axis is still the depth and the uh, horizontal axis uh, the each line will be the ratio of R and A, and the horizontal axis, uh, you can find out the uh, deflection factor F. Uh, so those are all the informations from the multi-layer elasticity theory, and uh, uh, usually for the um, for the uh, to implement this one, we need to know the uh, typical values of the elastic modulus. Uh, this table shows some typical values. For the uh, Poland cement concrete, uh, this one will usually give a very large modulus of elasticity. Um, that will be around uh, 300 me uh, 300,000 uh, megapascal. So this is usually the highest one. And uh, the asphalt concrete can give you the value around 3,000 to 4.5,000. Uh, for the cement uh, cement based. Uh, Main bound based is around 15,000, and you can find out the other values usually for if you have a uh, sub, uh, sub base or uh, subgrade with the sealed soil or clay soil, you can find out the value that they are uh, very small. It could be as low as uh, 35 megapascal. Uh, so, those will be some typical values. Uh, in your analysis, you need to uh, do some ex lab experiment to find out their uh, elastic modulus. And uh, also, we can uh, in the in the in the study in the estimation of the multi-layer um, elasticity theory, we need to know the Poisson's ratio for the uh, material or for the pavement layer. And uh, here we have some typical values for the uh, for different type of the materials for the hard mix asphalt. The range is around 0.3 to 0.4. Typically, it's around 0.35 for the PCC slabs. Is uh, between 0 0.15 to 0 0.2, and the typical value is 0 0.15. We can find out the values of the other type of the materials in this table. Um, and finally, let me uh, just show you one example about uh, how we're going to use the uh, uh, multi layer elasticity theory to calculate the uh, vertical stress and the deflections at, a point, at any point behind the uh, uh, one pavement structure. Um, okay, uh, so in this example, we assume that there is a uh, homogeneous half space. Uh, is we have a homogeneous half space uh, uh, two circle load, and the uh, the diameter the diameter of the contact area is ten inch, uh, which would be around uh, two hundred and fifty four millimeters. And the spacing, the spacing between these two tires, which would be the center line to the center line of this one, is 20 inches. So, which would be the value showing here. And the pressure, the pressure of the contact area is uh, uh, 50 psi. Uh, this would be the typical uh, contact pressure, the tire pressure of the truck. And we also know that the modulus of elasticity is uh, 10,000 psi, and the Poisson's ratio is set as 0.5, and we want to find out the vertical stress, which would be the uh, uh, sigma z, and the vertical strain, the epsilon z, and the deflection at point A. So those would be the three variables we want to find. And uh, we also know the location of point A. The location of point A is directly behind the center line of the left tire, but it will be around 20 inches away to the center line of the right tire. 
So that will be all the information we can obtain. Um, so uh, I don't think I have enough time to go through the solution for this one. Uh, I will probably just uh, uh, stop here and uh, then show you the solution for this example next in the next lecture. Uh, but before I close the meeting, I would like to check whether you have any questions or any uh, uh, concerns about this lecture. Uh, you can actually leave your message uh, in the meeting chat or you uh, just uh, feel free to um, uh, raise your hand or leave a message in the meeting chat. Okay, uh, if no, then that will be probably all about meeting today. And uh, in the next lecture, uh, I will um, I will provide another um, another in class questions, uh, which will be the uh, uh, the topic with respect to the um, the uh, traffic loading and uh, volume measurement, and uh, it will be definitely will be assigned at the end of the uh, lecture on Wednesday. So. Uh, just uh, go go back to take and have a review about the um, the uh, these lectures. Uh, in addition, um, I want to uh, release the third homework. The third homework will be related to the uh, traffic loading and the volume estimation, and also the um, estimation, the stress and strain analysis of the flexible and the rigid pavements. So you can uh, you can start to work on the part that I have already taught. Uh, there will be some materials will be covered in this topic. Uh, the deadline is a uh, as next uh, sometime next week Wednesday. I cannot remember. Uh, you 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 can you will have you will, you will get more details from the uh, from the avenue to learn. Okay. Uh, if we don't have any questions, I guess that will be all today. Uh, just feel free to email me if you have anything in your mind and uh, uh, we will continue the, uh, the topic in the next lecture. Okay. Uh, okay, I guess that'll be all. Thank you very much for your time and I will see you uh, on Wednesday.